remotely and centrally managing a group of Windows servers in a workgroup environment where the servers are not domain joined can present significant challenges. These challenges become exacerbated when using Windows Server Core in a workgroup environment. However, remote administration of workgroup Windows servers from a centralized administrative workstation is achievable by correctly configuring trusted host and DNS suffixes on all systems. Additionally, it is possible to configure a high availability failover cluster in a workgroup environment, which we will cover in a future video. To ensure trusted hosts function correctly, the following prerequisites must be met. All computers have valid NetBIOS computer names. All computers have valid IPv4 addresses allowing network communications between systems. All computers are able to query a functional DNS server that can be managed by the administrator. All systems must belong to the same work group. All systems must share the same usernames and passwords for any accounts used to administer the servers. All systems must have a DNS suffix. The domain name chosen for the suffix is arbitrary unless a specific one is required. All system names must be resolvable via DNS. A Windows client with remote server administration tools, RSAT, and Windows Admin Center installed. Luckily, setting up a standalone DNS server in either Windows or Linux is easy, but is outside the scope of this tutorial. I'll cover setting up standalone DNS servers in another video. For now, ensure the DNS servers are configured with a DNS zone that matches the DNS suffix of the workgroup systems. Relying on the local system's host file is insufficient, particularly when configuring a failover cluster. For the Windows client, we are using Windows 11 Professional, but the process is similar if using Windows 10. You can also use Windows Server as an administrative workstation. First, we need to configure the connection specific DNS suffix. Right click Start, Network Connections, Advanced Network Settings. Click Ethernet, Edit next to More Adapter Options. Select IPv4, Properties, Advanced, DNS tab. In the DNS suffix for this connection, enter your DNS name. Click OK twice, followed by close. Now we need to set the primary DNS suffix for the computer. System, About, click Domain or Work Group. Change, More, and enter your DNS name. Click OK twice. Acknowledge the You Must Restart Your Computer to Apply These Changes dialog box, followed by Close. Restart the computer. After login, open an administrative or elevated terminal, type ipconfig forward slash all, and notice the primary DNS suffix and the connection specific DNS suffix will reflect your domain name. Type services.msc, open Windows Remote Management, change the startup type to automatic, and click Start. Type gpedit.msc and navigate to Computer Configuration. Administrative Templates, Windows Components, Windows Remote Management, WinRM Client. Open and enable Trusted Host and enter the computer names of the systems to manage. In my example, I'm allowing all computers where the name starts with THT. Wildcards are allowed. We can also use PowerShell to set the trusted hosts. Use the get-item commandlet 
to get the max envelope size in kilobytes. If the value is 500, we should increase it to prevent a possible error when using Server Manager. Use the set-item commandlet to set the value to 640. You can use a larger value if desired or necessary. If you see an error about the connection type being set to public, you can change the network type to private using the set-connection profile commandlet. Run the set-item commandlet again to change the value and verify with the gash-item commandlet. Install all remote server administration tools. Right-click Start, Settings, Optional Features. Click View Features and type RSAT. Select All and click Next. To install all remote server administration tools with no internet connection, see my video here. Install Hyper-V Management Tools. Start, type Control Panel. Programs, turn Windows features on or off. Expand Hyper-V and select Hyper-V Management Tools. Optionally, install Windows Admin Center. Since you manually modified the trusted host settings, uncheck the Allow Windows Admin Center to modify. Otherwise, it will overwrite your entries with the wildcard. Ensure your client can resolve the servers using either NSLOOKUP or resolve dns name commandlet. Since configuring Windows Server with the desktop experience is practically the same as configuring a Windows administrative workstation, we won't retrace those GUI-based procedures. A Windows Server core will complete the configuration within a PowerShell session. In Server Configuration, sconfig, select option 15 to exit the PowerShell. If using Windows Server Core 2019 or earlier, sconfig will exit to the command prompt. Type start PowerShell to enter a PowerShell session. Add local accounts with the same username and password as those used for the administrative workstation. Add the new local accounts to the server's local administrators group. Identify the correct network adapter if multiple adapters exist. For this demonstration, the network adapter is named Ethernet. Use the set-dns-client commandlet to set the connection-specific DNS suffix. Use the new-item-property commandlet to modify the registry to set the primary DNS suffix. Reboot for the primary DNS suffix change to take effect. Back in sconfig, select option 15 again to exit the PowerShell. Verify the DNS suffixes with ipconfig slash all. Type winrm quickconfig, hit Y when prompted. Use the set-item commandlet with the wsman path to add computers to the trusted hosts. Set the max envelope size to a value higher than 500. Ensure the server can resolve the client and other servers using either nslookup or resolve-dns name commandlet. Optionally, enable open SSH server. If using Windows Server 2019 or 2022, Add Open SSH Server first, then set and start the service. All the PowerShell commands used in configuring Windows Server Core work with Windows Server with desktop experience and the Windows 11 or Windows 10 administrative workstations. On each server to be remotely managed, we have to configure the local firewall rules to allow inbound management traffic. Although we can use the Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security to configure the firewall rules on servers with the desktop experience, enabling the necessary rules in mass using PowerShell may be easier since we have to do that anyway for Windows Server Core. 
Back at the Windows Administrative Workstation, open Server Manager. Click All Servers. The area should be blank. Right click All Servers, select Add Servers. Click the DNS tab and type the name of the service to be added. Unfortunately, you can only add one server at a time when using the DNS tab. Once the selected area is populated, click OK. Under the Manageability column, it should read similarly to Online Performance Counters Not Started. Right click any server and select Computer Management. Although we can administer most areas using computer management connected to a remote system, Device Manager and Disk Management are exceptions by default. To manage storage on the remote systems, use Server Manager, File, and Storage Services. Back at Server Manager, All Servers, right click any server and select Windows PowerShell. Here, we are in a remote PowerShell session on the remote computer. Likewise, you can use Enter dash PSS session from a terminal session. You can tell by the prompt that you are remoted into the server via a remote PowerShell session. With Windows Admin Center open, click Add, Servers, and type the name of the server to be added. Like with Server Manager, you must type the full name when not using Active Directory. After Windows Admin Center resolves your server, click Add. Using Windows Admin Center, you can now manage devices along with storage. For remote management, using Windows Admin Center, this is the way. If Open SSH Server is enabled on the servers, you can SSH into them in the same manner as you would any Linux server or workstation. From a terminal or PowerShell session, or using your favorite terminal emulator, such as PuTTY, you can use native SSH syntax to connect. Accept the certificate fingerprint to be added to your known underscore host file and log in. You can tell by the prompt that you are remoted into the server via a SSH session. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.